Did you get the tree? Oh, yes, yes, I got it. How much was it? Eighteen dollars. <whistles> mm-hmm. And they wanted five dollars extra delivery charge. Must be pretty big. Yes, it was pretty big, all right, but I got it home. Good, honey. I'll be down in a few minutes to take it out of the car. Oh, no, no, Darren, don't bother. I can manage. <laughs> dollars delivery charge. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate Christmas a day later. Or in the middle of January, depending on when the bus gets fixed. <laughs> I wish we could tell Santa where we are. He'll never find us here. Strange you should say that, Chris. Very strange, because a little boy just about your age said those very words in this very place 100 years ago. Why did the boy say that? Well, see, when the first settlers built this town, all the kids were afraid, just like you were now, Chris. They were afraid Santa would never find them way out here. So the parents, they figured out a plan. What was that? Well, they, they, they made a bell. And they made a bell out of the purest silver. And that bell was so shiny, it gleamed like a beacon, even at night. And the tone, the tone of that bell was so crisp and beautiful. You could hear it for miles and miles and miles. So, every Christmas Eve, exactly at midnight, they rang the bell. They rang the bell to guide Santa into the town. Did it work? It sure did. It sure did. They never missed a Christmas. And people came, people came for miles and miles and miles just to see that beautiful bell. And some of them stayed. They stayed right here. This wasn't always a, a quiet, shabby, lonely, little ghost town, no siree. Once, this was a hustling, bustling place. Everyone was happy and doing real well. It was a good town, too. So good that the sheriff didn't even carry a gun. No siree. He carried a, a guitar instead. He was a handsome devil, that sheriff. His name was Sheriff Swell. Not only was he sheriff, he was the only source of news. And as town historian, he sang about all the important events going on in town. He swept the streets from dawn till daybreak. And there was a beautiful lady named Miss Bell who ran the saloon. It was a real nice place that served lemonade and lollipops. <laughs> I guess I'll lick my lolly later. <laughs> The kids, well, the kids were all sharp as a whip because they had a pretty young school mom to teach them. Well, things went real smooth in town until that day, the day before Christmas. A stranger rode into town, the meanest man in the West, Main Sydney. <laughs> Our journey's over, Benson. It's time for you to make a choice. 
I'm staying. Oh, what? Oh, relax. It's just a joke. Where's your sense of humor? I know. I still got a lot of work to do. Well, then it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Mama, I don't want to say goodbye. Oh, don't worry, son. I'm with you every day. Our bodies can't live forever, but our love can. I love you, Mama. <laughs> I love you too, son. See you here soon. How soon? <laughs> when the time is right. You'll be surprised how fast the years pass. Make the most of them, Vincent. I will, Mama. I will. I will, Mama. I will. I will. I will. I think he's coming to. Ben, son, can you hear me? <laughs> yes. And unfortunately, I can see you, too. Oh, I've never been so happy to be insulted in my life. Well, I knew you'd pull through, Benson. Are you all right? Well, that depends. Are you still the governor? Well, as far as I know. There wasn't an election today or anything, was there? Is Katie married? Married? I'm not even allowed to date. Clayton, laugh for me. Laugh? Huh. Huh. <laughs> hmm. Everything's back to normal, Governor. And Krause. Yeah? I sure hope that turtleneck in your office closet is blue. How oh, did he know that? How in heaven's name could he possibly know? <laughs> Last one, and it's for Lisa. Thank you. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Oh, and Mr. Barkway, this is a surprise. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, I should have called before I came over, but I was afraid you'd say no. I had a very sleepless night last night, and, well, I, I just had to come over. Come in. Thank you. Oh, uh, I don't want to intrude. Come in. Well, uh, everybody, look who's here. Oh, Merry oh, Christmas. Mr. Brockway, Merry Christmas. Tabitha, uh, why don't you and Lisa take Adam upstairs? Y you can play up there for a while. Okay? Come on, sweetheart. You can take your blocks. Go on. Go on. I told Mrs. Stevens I didn't want to intrude. But I've got something I'd like to say to all of you. A peculiar thing happened to me here last night. <laughs> the equivalent of 20 years on the psychiatrist's couch. I discovered something about myself. I found out I'm a racist. <laughs> a racist? Oh, not the obvious, out in the open type of racist. Not me, no. I was a sneaky racist. <laughs> I was so sneaky, I didn't even know it myself. A very smart man said, to adequately define the problem is the first step towards solving it. Well, I've defined it. Oh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Here you go, Santa. Oh, thanks, kid. You can rest assured it'll go to someone needy. Thanks. But you're not gonna find anyone needier than me. <laughs> but a quarter's not gonna help my problem. Cheer up, kid. Things will get better. Hey, you from Harlem? No, Park Avenue. Things just got better. <laughs> what seems to be the problem? Well, I spent all the money I made working at my dad's corporation. Oh, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
your dad has a corporation and you live on Park Avenue? Now, you aren't pulling old Santa's beard now, are you? No. What's so strange about that? Well, there aren't a lot of brothers living up on Park Avenue. Oh, well, two of us are brothers and two of us aren't. My dad and my sister are white. White? You know, I think I like this story better than the little drummer boy. <laughs> Pray go on. Well, now I don't have no money left to buy Christmas presents for my family or a housekeeper or a chauffeur. I didn't know things were so tough up there on Park Avenue. I just gotta find a job. Uh, there must be something I can do to earn some money. Have you got any ideas, Santa? I'll do anything. Just anything. All right, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Lay a little something on the orphan angels. Mr. Jones, I really appreciate you giving me this job. Oh, uh, wait, 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 hold it, hold it, kid, hold it, hold it. See, you don't just ring the bell. See, there's an art to this. There is? Sure. Now, first, let's start with the basics. See, you don't just say ho, ho, ho and ring the bell. You got to look hungry. Can you do that? Can I? That's my specialty. <laughs> well, let me see your hungry face. How's this? <laughs> That's what I call hungry. That'll take you to the head of any bread line. Thanks. Well, let's go to work. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, three Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. God bless you, sir. That will buy an orphan a bowl of hot soup. How about throwing it on something for dessert? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, brother. 